Hi, welcome to Promo Insiders, an ASI media podcast that covers the issues that matter most to the promotional products industry. I'm Chris Rubo for ASI, and today we're spotlighting a huge acquisition and related new partnership with major significance for the promotional products and printing industries. The deal involves the Advertising Specialty Institute, ASI, acquiring a promo-focused events and media portfolio from Printing United Alliance. Here to talk with me about that today is ASI President and CEO Tim Andrews and Printing United United Alliance President Dave Laskuski. Gentlemen, thanks for being with me today. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, thanks All for right. having me, Chris. You got it. So just before we jump into these questions, I just want to give people a little more context about ASI and Printing United Alliance. Um, ASI serves a network of 25,000 suppliers, distributors, and decorators in the $26.1 billion, that's with a B, promotional product space. The company's flagship product, the technology platform ESP, manages the industry supply and marketing chain. Printing United Alliance is a nonprofit and is the most comprehensive member based printing and graphic arts association in North America, serving industry professionals across market segments with education and training. So, with that background, let's jump into the first question. Um, what exactly is ASI acquiring from Printing United Alliance? Can you lay that out for us? Sure. Great. Thanks, Chris, and thanks for that intro. Um, we are acquiring five power meetings and powerhouse meetings. These are hosted by our events where suppliers attend and really host and sponsor uh, the distributors that attend. So there are five of those located across key markets. And that really complements you know, the ASI portfolio of, of hosted buyer events we've had for quite a number of years. Um, also included is the, in print and media, the print and promo marketing magazine, uh, daily newsletter, uh, media website, and a product search tool. Um, all of those things really helping ASI distributors and suppliers and decorators really expand the toolkit they have in resources and technology across all of promo. All right, very, very good. That that lays it out. There's a lot in play there. So, um, Dave, just any anything to add to that? Just the uh, printed magazine. I'm a print guy, so the uh, the print magazine of print and promo marketing came along with that, and uh, we we have uh, spent a lot a long time uh, managing that brand. We we love that brand. There is so much overlap between the the print and promo uh, space. Um, you know, however, for us in terms of you know, a home for, for the, you know, for the brand where, where ASI is solely focused on, on this space where we could, you know, leverage our complementary uh, services. It just makes a whole heck of a lot of sense to have ASI take this over and give, uh, give them a home. All right. That's, that's interesting. It's a nice segue to into my second question, which is um, why do this deal? Why does it make sense for, for, for both organizations? And um, Dave, maybe do you want to, do you want to start on that one? Sure. Uh, so, so Tim and I kind of started talking a, a little bit uh, towards the the end of last year, actually the middle of last year, and mm -hmm. you know it's it's undeniable that that uh, you know a big section of our members and even non-members in the printing industry are are have been you know entering the promotional product space. Uh, many of them are already in there or exploring it, uh, and really from our standpoint, um, you know we wanted to find a a, a partner. Uh, to help us on the training, the education, really the awareness. Uh, there is there is such a lack of awareness, you know, on the printing side of what this whole industry actually is, mm -hmm. how to get into it, how to understand, you know, pricing codes and suppliers and distributors. The supply chain is is a little bit daunting uh, for a lot of printers, and it wasn't something that I thought that we could really do on our own. So we were looking for a partner to kind of help us from a content and awareness and education perspective, uh, help our members understand and, and, and navigate this as, as they're exploring this as an option. The only sticking point in talking with, with Tim early on was that we kind of competed in this little area on the, on the powerhouse and, 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 um, and, the, and the media side. So it, it just this, this acquisition not only was great for ASI, but it also kind of paved the way for us to do this where now we're completely complementary and there, there's no competition. Interesting perspective. Um, Tim, from an ASI perspective, obviously is the acquiring company. Why, you know, why pursue this deal? I think there's really, really a lot of reasons, and Dave touched on some of them. One of them is that you know, about 40% of promotional products distributors in the ASI network already are selling, reselling print. Uh, and they're doing decoration. 
And so that was really compelling. We said, gosh, this is an opportunity to be able to partner with the largest nonprofit association in this space and be able to offer education and all sorts of information to those existing ASI members that are already doing decorating or they're looking at decorating uh, or they're reselling print. And so that's about 40 percent of our population. So that's an incredible opportunity. Um, and we think it's really going to help those distributors, you know, fuel expansion, growth opportunities for themselves. And, and it's really important for suppliers too. obviously suppliers are decorating millions upon millions of products every sure. single year. Right. And uh, Printing United really specializes in their trade show and in all the things they do of helping people understand how to very efficiently decorate. Um, and so that's an opportunity for suppliers to be able to be invited to their trade show and participate and for us to provide education, not only to Dave's audiences, but for him to be able to provide education to our audiences. All right. Good, good stuff there. So let's unpack some of that a little bit more, because it's not just as you both allude to, this is not just ASI is buying something from Printing United Alliance. This is this is an acquisition, but it's also the start of a, a new partnership. So can we you've already alluded to some of it, but can we unpack maybe more of what that partnership looks like? And Tim, do you want to take the lead on that one? Sure, absolutely. I mean, effectively, um, you know, the Alliance is now our exclusive strategic partner in the print and decoration world. And ASI is uh, their ex exclusive partner, uh, strategic partner in the promo world. Um, you know, the industries are coming together. You know, this is a really, uh, you know, the, the confluence of these industries is really significant. If you were looking 20 years ago, you know, very few people that were selling promotional products had, had come from the print world or had come from the screen printing world. But now a very significant number of them have and are really crossing over. And there's like really a confluence in all these um, in all these segments. So, you know, that's really part of it. It's that shared sort of long term commitment to making this partnership really add value to the clients of both ASI and the Alliance. All right, um, Dave, just interested in your take. I imagine there's a lot of similarities there, but you, you, just from your perspective, what, you know, how, yeah, I think how Tim, does this work as a partnership? Yeah, I think Tim touched on it earlier. I mean, for us, as we kind of started looking at, at, at the membership crossover and then also where we didn't have uh, members, um, being able to tap into the ASI supplier members and, and even some of those distributors that are now getting into, to, you know, the short run and personalization uh, from a decoration perspective, you know, our, our, our association focuses solely on putting ink on substrates. You know, most people think of printing and they think ink on paper. It is well beyond that. And, and a big part of that is, is the promotional product space. Uh, so being able to help you know, decorators and 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 suppliers and distributors that may want to decorate, whether that's a a, a tumbler, whether that's a, a a piece of apparel, really source uh, you know smart technology, being able to talk to the vendors uh, about what's out there of how they can more effectively decorate, efficiently decorate, more sustainably uh, decorate. That's what we do uh, as an association. So I think being able to help, you know, bring them into the fold, give them a, a you know, a voice at, in, in our community is huge. And we're really looking forward to that. I think also that, you know, that, you know, that you have, you know, Printing United Expo is really an important place for distributors to attend. We'll be inviting, you know, the ASI distributors to attend that. Uh, it's in the fall in Las Vegas and also our suppliers. And it's not necessarily the people that are the suppliers that are at our trade shows, the ASI trade shows, these are people that are making decisions about the equipment and the services and the and the different kinds of technologies used to to really dramatically, you know, use to to decorate product. And so we're really excited about be, being able to educate everybody on all of those things. Great point there. Um, everything you both said ties into this next question, but I'll ask it anyway because you never know. We might unpack some things we haven't touched on. So, um, Tim, I'll maybe start with you on this one. From an ASI member's perspective, what are some of the additional benefits that they, they can expect as a result of this acquisition and the related partnership? Great. Well, first of all, at our large ASI trade shows in Chicago, in uh, beginning in Chicago actually this year, also Orlando and Fort Worth, the Alliance is going to provide education to distributors and suppliers about print distribution, decorating techniques for apparel, hard goods, ways to manage print and decoration businesses. Um, really a valuable aspect of what we'll be offering in our shows and for all of our distributors and suppliers to take advantage of. Um, this will all mean also mean that we'll be you know at the uh, at their show and doing that kind of similar education, uh, not only for people that are already participating in the promotional products industry, but also people that are looking at it and thinking about it. And there's a lot of crossover that's occurring. I've had some very large distributors already reach out to me saying they're really excited about the opportunity to oh. learn more about decorating techniques because they're thinking about doing it themselves 
or because they really want to better understand what they can do to leverage what suppliers already can do today in the promo space, but they just don't understand all the techniques and how they work. And of course, on the show floor um, in Vegas, they'll be able to see that actually happening. Okay. I'll editorialize here for just half a second if I could. <laughs> and that's, I mean, in a, in a world where everybody wants to be you know, if you have that client relationship already and you're providing one service for them and there's this adjacent service and solution you can provide, if it's a little bit of education and new partnerships to enable you to do that, why wouldn't you take that step? And it seems like more firms are interested in in, in doing that. Is that. It sounds like that's something you both are seeing. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, we're definitely seeing on our end, and that's what I was going to say in terms of there are so many ways that I think this partnership can can help both both segments of the market. And it's not just necessarily printers, uh, whether you're you know a commercial printer that does direct mail and catalogs or a wide format printer or an apparel decorator. There's multiple ways to get into this. They don't necessarily have to become uh, a distributor. You know, we have a number of members that have formed phenomenal partnerships uh, with with distributors, uh, right? So that where you know they don't necessarily want to open up their own distributorship and begin you know selling you know at becoming a one stop shop, but they realize because so many distributors are selling print, it's very symbiotic and it's going both ways. Mm -hmm. So it's you know rather than kind of doing this, that they, they will partner uh, with a distributor, uh, and and some of those have have gone really well. Some of them have led to M and A opportunities where you know yeah. if if I'm a small to medium distributorship, maybe I have you know three, five, seven years left. I don't have an exit plan or a succession plan. You know, working with a commercial printer or a wide format printer, to, you know, to offer this as a one stop shop. I mean, if you think about these programs, you know, a lot of times whether it's a logo or a piece of art. It's going on, you know, so many different things, but it's it's being farmed out to three or five different places. And, and you know, I think that the, the more we can help the customer become a single source, you know, the better. So, you know, I do think that there's so many opportunities. It's not a one size fits all here as to, hey, I'm a commercial printer. The first thing they think about as a printer is I need to manufacture, right? Okay. I put ink on things. So I think mm -hmm. education there around, no, you don't. You know, this you actually is probably the thing that the thing I would I would suggest that you do the, la the last yeah. is to actually right. invest in equipment, invest in and in, in, you know blank goods. But that's again that that you know on giving them that education around this is how the market works. But I think to your point earlier, Chris, it is really about helping the customer and and really understanding. Okay, Mr. Customer, you have this piece of art. Can you tell me about all the thing, all the end? You know, where where's you know all the things this was going to be printed having whether it's a commercial printer and a, and a distributor come together or be that one-stop shop solves a lot of problems for the customer and i think that is really what this partnership is going to help uh you know bring to light yeah i think that's keeps... a great point if i could just add one quick thing sure. of course, i think that yeah. networking piece that networking piece is really important because i think that as as we have you know people attending all of our shows and different shows I think that networking is really key because it's education, but it's also getting to know people, getting to understand and being able to create those kind of partnerships that really matter across the group. And, and that's really an important part of this, as Dave said. Yeah, fantastic point. And I think and just maybe the broadest point possible is that it keeps both industries relevant in changing times and, and, and gives it gives them both more chance to grow collectively. So you have to like that. Yeah, Chris, yeah. and if I could add one more thing, you know, and mm -hmm. Tim mentioned it earlier, the we did hear from a number of distributors that came to the show uh, last year, and it was kind of an aspect that not that I overlooked it, it just wasn't really top of mind to me. And be, just because they're not generally buyers of equipment and we are a, an equipment show, it's one point two million square feet and we really push equipment on, on the floor. What I what I kind of missed was that the distributors walking around the show floor that I talked to was hey, we're looking to see all the new technology that's mm -hmm. out there that then I can go find a printer that has that and be able to sell it. So even though they're not necessarily buying the equipment, they're driving demand and they're driving business to the equipment suppliers and user, which is a huge benefit to both our equipment manufacturer members and our printer members. And I think to Tim's point, we can do more of that by bringing distributors on the show floor. Wow. All right. Very, very interesting. I would not have thought that, but that's very, that's very cool to learn. And um, so I want to take, if I can, for a second, to kind of focus the lens a little internally, if we can. I'm just curious how the deal came about. You had alluded to it a bit before, <laughs> but is there any kind of behind the scenes insights you can give? Like, did you guys bump into each other in Center City, Philadelphia or something? Like, how did, <laughs> how did this happen? Like, Tim, maybe you could tell us. <laughs> 
Well, I would say uh, uh, Matt Barnes, who has been at ASI for more than 10 years, used to work with Dave um, at the predecessor company called Napco. And uh, so they had a longstanding you know, friendship and relationship. And uh, a few months ago, I said to Matt, gosh, we, I need to meet Dave and really see what we could do together. And so we had a a lunch that sort of kicked off the whole conversation. And and as Dave said, you know, we talked about it, is there something we can do together before? And it was just clear that as long as these these assets were still um, at Printing United, it was a bit more difficult. And so it just sort of evolved from there. Uh, Dave might have a different different viewpoint, but. No, I, 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 I recall that pretty, that our first conversation pretty vividly. And it was, uh, it was, there were so many great things that we could do together. It was kind of, all right, well, there's this kind of pink elephant in the room that we haven't really uh, talked about yet. And that is uh, where we kind of overlap. And, um, and it was, it was refreshing to talk to, to Tim and to Matt that they saw the, the, the market landscape the same way we did. And it really is about helping you know, both of our memberships uh, to grow and prosper and flourish. And when you keep your membership in mind first, you can kind of get through all the all the stuff on, on the back end. And so we that's kind of where we started. And quite frankly, the conversations got more and more invigorating and energizing as we got down the path here of all of the things that we could be doing together. So uh, it was a it was a it was a great time to, to, to have that conversation and, and uh, glad we got it across the finish line. Me too. And I, for, for us, I think, you know, when we did a lot of analysis internally, I think, you know, the realization that in fact, about 45% or so of our existing ASI distributors are yeah. already in the industries that are served by Printing United. And so bringing that together from an education perspective, from the trade show perspective, from the product perspective, just made a complete sense to be able to do that. Yep. Very interesting. All right. Well, thank thank you for that. Appreciate you guys giving us a little peek behind the curtain there. Um, Dave, I had I had a question for you because um, mm -hmm. a lot of the audience in this podcast is is kind of promo first focused. Sure. So, can can you just give us a little sense of the the size and the service yeah. offerings of the modern print market? You alluded to some of it before, but it's it's broad. <laughs> it's it's extremely broad and it's and it's segmented. So even the even the Bureau of Labor Statistics doesn't does not do a great job of adequately uh, describing who we are, which is actually one of the things that we're working on on the government affairs side is to actually get the BLS to change how they code the printing industry. Most people think about print and they think, you know, unfortunately, newspapers, magazines, catalogs, you know, kind of, but that is that is only one small segment. And that's what I'll kind of call the, the commercial printing segment, uh, direct mail, brochures, you know, marketing collateral, those things. Uh, that side alone is about $87 billion just, just in, in, in the U.S. Um, and then you put on other, other segments like uh, signage uh, and floor graphics, uh, kind of that wide format side, um, apparel, uh, printing, screen printing, uh, direct to garment, direct to fabric. And then the biggest and fastest growing is actually the packaging space. So mm -hmm. you go into the supermarket, whether it's a flexible package, a folding carton, uh, labels is uh, is a huge segment. So when you tally all that up, and even our chief economist hasn't been able to put like a complete mm -hmm. number on this yet in the U.S., but it is well in excess of 125 billion dollars annually. Wow, wow, that's a lot of opportunity out there, isn't it? <laughs> it's it's a, it's a lot of logos on different things that could extend onto the uh, promotional product side. Yes, absolutely. Ah, right. very interesting. Thank thank you for that perspective. Um, I'm going to pull the lens back a little bit here now and just kind of ask you both, how do you see the print and promo markets performing this year and then evolving over the, the next decade or so? And I know that those are big questions and, you know, <laughs> if we had a crystal ball, it's tough, but, you know, no one's, no one's going to hold you to it. We're just curious as sure. leaders in the industry, what your perspectives are. And Tim, do you want to take this one first? Sure. Um, I, I think this year the performance is going to be pretty steady. I think, you know, our first quarter, uh, our research showed that the industry was off, off about a percentage point uh, in promo. I think it's going to be fairly flat for the rest of the year. I think the economy is is strong, but I think the economy is not necessarily growing robustly in our spaces. Um, but I think if you look further out, as you're sort of talking about, really, I think it's a huge opportunity for growth because we've got all of these different spaces that we're talking about, uh, you know, whether it's screen printing or decorating product in in, in whatever way. Uh, it's the equipment piece of this. It's the promotional products piece of this all coming together in one confluence. And so if you look out 10 years, I think they're going to be more and more people that are selling all the products and services we're talking about. I mean, even today, our research shows that about 60 percent of the revenue from, for distributors 
comes from not from from promotional products. The rest, the other forty percent, is from not selling promotional products. It's building websites, providing print, providing other kinds of services to people. I think that's going to continue to to sort of grow and be an important part of that additional revenue for distributors. And so I think you should look out. These are industries that are going to come closer and closer together, and that confluence is going to be very clear to people. I think, and and that's really why we did the deal. We wanted to help all of our members to be able to grow their business, to be able to look at new opportunities, be able to re grow revenue in the next decade and two decades, and not be so siloed that they aren't really looking at all the opportunities that are out there. So I'm really excited about what this deal brings to the table in terms of our customers and our joint customers looking at how do they grow their business and how do they really thrive in the next 10 or 20 years. Got it. All right. And how about you, Dave? Yeah, I think for us on the printing side, I mean, obviously it's an election year, which is always great for for printers, right? Uh, yeah. Direct mail, yard signs, you know, you, you can't promo. go anywhere. And, and promo, day. And, and, and promo, promo day. right? So, so uh, our state of the industry report, based on uh, you know the the survey work that we done that we've done, uh, we're 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 shooting for about a four percent uh, growth uh, over last year, and last year we were pretty flat. So I think a lot of that is is specific to to the election uh, cycle. Um, but every segment is a little bit uh, different, um, obviously, between packaging and apparel and 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 commercial. Um, over the long haul, I mean, I think we're going to still see a little bit of m and a uh, on on the on the printing side. Um, the, you know, the technology is just, you know, we used to be, there was specific technology that would print, whether it was a you know a folding carton or a or a piece of uh, uh, direct mail or or something. You know, the the technology now, especially with digital, which has obviously been very big in the in the promotional space as well, it's kind of democratized everything. So I think okay. you know printers can print on more things with a single device than they ever could before. So I do see consolidation and M and A activity uh, still happening. But I think print is going to be different. You know, our, for example, like at our expo, well, we used to have people would come in and say, yeah, I want to go see an offset press or I want to see, a, you know, a, a sheet fed, uh, you know, a cut sheet inkjet press. We're not hearing that as much. Now it's, I need to know, can you show me where I, you know, something that prints on metal or prints on yeah. wood uh, or ceramic tile? Uh, two years ago, a couple of years ago at the, at the expo, we had an inkjet printer that was printing on cinder blocks. Um, so printing and the technology of printing is evolving where, you know, I think that that the overall uh, growth of the industry is going to continue. But I think it's going to change from an ink on paper growth mm -hmm. to an ink on something else, which, again, I think, you know, extends into that promotional product space very, very well, because we can basically print on just about anything right now. All right. Very, very interesting and, and, and realistic and positive perspectives, I think, on both industries and how they're going to evolve. Um, I'll just ask you now, Dave, we'll start with you. Just any final thoughts, anything you want people to walk away from this podcast, you know, making sure they kind of hold on to? Yeah, well, I think this is something that that was long overdue. I think that, you know, that uh, Tim mentioned Matt. Matt and I started talking about this 15 years ago uh, mm -hmm. when he was when he was still at NAPCO. And as we saw, I remember the first time I ever walked into a promotional product supplier because I was running our printing brands at the time. I said, holy cow, these they're all printers. I mean, they're just throwing ink on everything, mm -hmm. but it's just umbrellas and and, you know, and stress balls and all these other things. But the technology is is was primarily the same they were just using it differently so i am just i'm super excited about you know the not only working together and what we've announced but maybe some things that we'll be you know announcing in the future uh, as, as a part of this as well that um i think again is really just going to help both memberships uh, tremendously and uh, i was really it was great to to kind of meet him through all this and and really excited to work with him and then every everybody uh, over at asi really looking forward to it all right, great stuff. And Tim, final word, takeaways yeah, for folks. Yeah. I would say equally excited. I think uh, I think there's a lot we can do. I think we came from the very first meeting saying, what can we do to help our customers and our clients and our members grow? And I think as long as we stay focused on that, it's going to be a great outcome for everybody. Um, because if they are successful, then we will all be successful. And that's really what's important. I think also looking at you know the future. You know, this is a long-term agreement. I think we've got lots of other ideas we didn't explore yet. Uh, this is sort of stage one. So stay tuned. Okay. All right. Great. Well, Tim, Dave, thank you both so much for joining me today. This has been very interesting. Thank you for taking us inside this deal and, and what it means for the industry. Excellent. Thanks for having us, Chris. Thank you very much, Chris.